Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are and whatever you're up to. Matthew Grant here, CEO of Instec, and I'm back behind the microphone this week talking to Andy Moss, CEO of Send Technology. Well, more of that in a moment, but it's been another busy week for us here with a live evening event on Tuesday, supported by Guidewire with an audience of close to 200 people. And we managed to fit 11 speakers on stage in less than 90 minutes. And had a benefit, we provided a summary of the evening with ChatGBT in the bar afterwards. Well, our next event is on 18th of July, and we're going to be finding out how global corporations are using technology for risk reduction and insurance buying. Details on the website, www.instec.co. Now, Andy Moss has a great use case for ChatGPT and other generative AI tools, and you're going to be hearing about that shortly. Now, it's a pleasure to be working with companies like Send, which have got founders from insurance, real clients, and revenue, and which have survived for their early years with little or even no funding. And they go off to raise money to accelerate growth and global expansion. As usual, there's a lot in this episode, whether you're in the market for an underwriting workbench or you just want to gain some insight into what's happening in technology and successful scale-ups as you plug us in for half an hour. Andy, great to be talking to you. I'm so fascinated by what you're doing at Send. People keep talking about you, really exciting business, and we just love talking to uh, to founders. We're in Britain, so we've got to talk about the weather. So uh, it's like quite hot just now in the UK. Are you a fan of the, the hot weather? Or are you getting bored of it now? Yeah, it's really warm here today. I live in Canterbury, and it feels like summer's properly broken. And uh, yeah, I love the heat. So let's talk about Send. So just a bit of intro from us, first of all, on who you are, and then we're going to dig into your, your own story. So... Send, you're offering a modular commercial insurance software to insurers, reinsurers, and MGAs. We're going to hear about some of those in a moment. And the core underwriting workbench supports everything from the initial inquiry right through to binding the business. It's a single place for underwriters to access all that data, documents, decision points. And what I like about it is it can be used both for an established insurer as a core system for mature companies bolted onto what they've already got, works with legacy, but also for some companies of early stage, it satisfies them as well. And I've, I've seen the demo, so I know how it works. You founded the business back in 2017, and the union co-founders, uh, insurance veterans, and today you are CEO. So welcome. Have I missed anything from that summary of Send? I guess just one thing to add, we, we all started out in the London market, so we've got a lot of experience working in that environment, but we're branching out. We've got customers around the globe now, so... Born in London, offering services to the world. I think it should be part of your tagline. That's great. So we'll talk a bit more about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that. So your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is your colleague Ben Huckle, who we had on episode 187 in April last year, has had over 1,200 downloads from the podcast. So you actually swapped roles as well. So at that time, Ben was CEO. You're now CEO. I guess your challenge is to uh, see if we can get more listeners for that podcast, which actually was quite successful. I know you have some clients in the back of that. Yeah, just in terms of scaling, we didn't talk about this. In terms of scaling, send how many people have you got in the business today? I guess we've we've got just over eighty people now, so we've grown substantially as an organisation. I'd love to beat Ben Huckle on the downloads for this. It'll be a challenge, but let's see how it goes. Um, he can buy me lunch if if I beat him. Let's let's do that, and you can come along as well if you want, Matthew. Okay, that's great. Lunch for three, and well, he has a year to get there, so we should give you a little bit of a you know, maybe maybe. <laughs> An autumn lunch, Andy, if you beat Ben, and Ben can, ben can buy us all lunch. Uh, Excellent. Right. said, Ben, look out, 1,200 downloads. You better get yours out there. Keep getting them coming in. Now, well, let's talk about the, the workbench. I had a demo of this a couple of years ago, and I, I thought it was great in the sense that it, it was very clarifying what it did. You know, I could see how it's putting together bits of data. I also see, actually, you offer people the chance to go to the website and, and click a video and get a, uh, a demo of that. But we're on a podcast, we're audio, your task, now your second task, is how to bring that to life for people that right now can't see the demo. What would they see if they they looked at the demo or looked at the uh, the send workbench? I'll set the scene quickly. So, the space we operate in is in that pre-bind underwriting space where there's lots of activities, lots of people involved. Underwriting is a bit of a team sport. There's all sorts of handoffs and data collection and an activity. We provide. Uh, a platform that gives underwriting teams a view over all of their submissions, wherever they've come from, whichever line of business it is, and lets them process those through to the point of quotes and bind, um, as you said earlier. 
I think what differentiates us is that you see something simple on the screen, you see submissions moving left to right with lots of activities going on. Our differentiator is that we've got deep workflow and integration behind the scenes as well. So it's hard to bring to life, but think of it as the one-stop shop for managing your submissions. Yeah, I guess like many successful founders, you built the business because the three of you were working for another organization, saw some of the challenges and thought, well, if there's no solution out there that can help you in your prior world, let's go and build one ourselves. Can you just talk a little bit about you know, where you came from and, and what motivated the three of you to get together and, and build the business? We were all working in London market on central services uh, developments. That's where we met. We met working at um, exchanging, as, as it was called at the time. And so we were working in that kind of that messaging and post bind space. So we built an integration platform to start with. That's now become Send Connect. And we saw the opportunity to build the underwriting workbench on top of that. Good. And we won't revisit the discussion we had with Ben last year about how you, you got your first client, but it's a really fascinating story about how you very rapidly went from a, a startup to getting a major UK insurer who actually trusted you to build out the platform. And I think it's just a reminder that people who've got experience you know, doing this in the industry, uh, if you can kind of figure out how to move from an established company to a startup world, which has got its own challenges. And then I just want to get some into specifics about what you're doing at Send. So I've read that you are a low-code platform. People use these words a little bit, I think, without fully understanding what the difference is between low-code and no-code. I guess the hint is in the word. But it, could you just explain for the people that you may not understand or might need to be helped to sort of clarify, when you talk about a low-code platform, what does that actually mean in practice, and particularly for people that are going to be using the platform? I think there's a lot of uses of the phrases uh, low-code and no-code, and some of that's rooted in marketing, some of it's rooted in the solution, but I'll give my take. So we have a platform that has an established data model, has sophisticated user interface around the underwriting process that helps people do all the things they need to do to, to, to handle a submission. What we describe our platform as being loco because you can extend the functionality various points in the process. So you can have custom screens, you can have custom integrations, and we achieve that through configuration. So you're not cracking out a load of code and a heavy development effort. We've got a kind of a library of functions and integration that helps accelerate that. So for our new customers, they're able to take advantage of, of that library and build a solution faster. We go to our customers with a platform that gives them a great starting point, but that low code piece is the, their secret source. It's how they operate as a business and the things that differentiate them from their competitors. And then, Andy, for people that are listening and might be wondering how decisions are being made today by people that are looking at taking on an underwriting workbench, I mean, this is quite a big decision to make. What kind of things are, are they assessing when they look as to who they want to partner with for these types of implementations? We see people investing in this space and they want a platform that's going to allow their underwriting to be more efficient, more effective. They want to leverage the technology that's out there. Everyone's got a policy admin system. They might choose to enhance that in, in certain ways. So maybe perform more of the activities that are pre-bind in the policy admin system. They may choose to go out and get a pure play, low code, no code platform. These platforms, there's a number of them out there, and they're industry agnostic. You might get a, an underwriting accelerator solution that sort of helps you deploy that technology quicker, and it's got some stuff that's out of the box. I think those pure low-code, no-code platforms, they're really good at getting the simple stuff done, but there's a limit to, to what can be achieved. It, you try and do something complex, it gets very hard. And then you've got where Send sits, and there's a number of players in this space. Pure play, underwriting workbench that has a bunch of features out of the box, helps you implement quicker, and has some of that complex, sophisticated capability that is specific to underwriting that you might not get with the other solutions. Right from the beginning, since you worked with Aviva as a client, I think it was your first client, you've had a strategy of 
what I've heard you refer to as continuous development, and you rely on client feedback to do that. Can you just explain how does that actually work in, in practice? So we've built our product in, in collaboration with people who do the underwriting process. So what that means in practice is that you have product designer from Send, practitioners who are actually doing the underwriting or maybe the operational people uh, who, who might be cleansing data or processing a submission in some way. We get them together to focus on how a new feature will be developed. And that then goes through a design process where they'll be able to see early designs, what we call wireframes, which show how the screens will be, be working, and then maybe getting into prototypes built using design tools so that people can try some new, new bits out. We share small videos with people to show what's coming up and, and get their feedback as well. So it's a very interactive process, and, and it means we're getting early valuable input from the people who are going to use the system um, because the last thing anyone wants is us to just throw something over the fence and uh, and it, it doesn't work the way they want it to. Yeah, no, it's great to hear using all the tools available. I mean, a tool including getting somebody on a call or going to see them face-to-face using video. I mean, the days of sort of long detailed specifications for software, I think, have, uh, have pretty much died. And then I want to talk about a, a challenge that London market has, specialty business has. You know, despite the best efforts of many people, we're still hearing about 90% of submissions for in commercial insurance coming in with unstructured documents, either email attachments or maybe directly in the email itself. I've heard you talk about smart submission and managing the chaos, but but what does that, again, what does that mean in practice for what you're offering people to get through this mess? I think the problem we're trying to address with smart submission is that underwriters and, and their teams are frequently, they've got two screens open and they've got Outlook or Gmail on one side and they've got our workbench on the other. Even though, you know, in the London market, there's a lot going on with placing platforms like PPL and MySpace. When we talk to our customers, they, they quite often tell us that they've seen the submission arrive by email before they see it get into those platforms. There will be a need for, for a good while yet to have email submissions being processed in the most efficient way possible. So we've got Smart Submission, a new component we're launching uh, this year, which unifies our underwriting workbench with the mailbox. So it's leveraging the best technology that's out there to look at the email, look at the content, and help help insurers actually sift through those uh, submissions and prioritize routes, understand what's what's come through in a way that's that's going to drive efficiencies and better risk selection ultimately. You know, one of our customers, they get tens of thousands of submissions for sort of mid-market commercial product line, and they only want to quote on about 10% of them. So imagine all of that work looking through all those emails to try and find out which ones are the winners for you, really. So Smart Submission, we're launching this year and we're looking to address that problem. I also know you've been, you've been looking at some of the generative AI tools. I know ChatGPT, you were looking at the licensed version as opposed to the free version. Is that part of what you're, you're going to be using for your Smart Submission process? Yes. I think everyone's looking at ChatGPT. Everyone's played around with it, you know, in, in the web browser, typing questions in and seeing how it operates. But we use the API and the API enables our smart submission system to talk to chat GPT and make sense of some text. And that text could be an email. So it could be, you know, so what's coming in the email, you can ask it questions in the same way you ask questions when you're using the user interface. Our system talks behind the scenes so you can understand, you know, who's the insured, what's the inception date, the key bits of information that you might want to pluck out of a submission and that could be an email, it could be in attached documents. We're getting great success with it, and I think it's disrupting how people look at it. I think the other thing with it is that we're only really seeing the start of how that will be used. So people are using it for interrogating data, but I think the next level will be using generative AI in combination with your data sets. So looking at a submission and saying, what's unusual about this risk or 
what are the outliers in the claims history for this submission? That's where we want to push it. And that's a, a combination of the technology that you get from OpenAI well, around, around the GPT models, but also overlaying our own technology to, to bring that together with our data sources as well. So the opportunities we think of it to get better insights and more automation, we're just scratching the surface at the moment. And that point you made there, well, I know the important thing that you just said is, is you focus it around specific information. So you're actually targeting it at emails, you can do claims documents, you can do attachments. It's not like going out and trying to look everywhere. It's a very focused approach. So it's, it's more about the efficiency of extracting information from documents that you trust and are valid as opposed to some of the challenges people have come across with you know, generative AI or chat GPT for looking at a much broader set. I think that's a really important distinction to make. Yeah, absolutely. It's focusing that technology on what would be in front of the underwriter. The way we look at it, it's just looking at every opportunity we can use with that technology to help underwriters do their job. That's what it all boils down to. And a lot of the things that underwriters do are perhaps mundane, simple data extraction, data cleansing. And really, that's not what they're in the business for. They want to be using their brain and thinking about the risk and those challenges around, you know, it going out to the internet and worrying about other data sources confusing the picture, we narrow the, the ask of chat GPT APIs in a way that gives us the crystal clear answer. Yeah, no, I really like that last tagline. Narrow the ask, you get a crystal clear answer. Definitely more to talk on that. We'll be thinking about it very differently, I think, in three months' time and, and again in six months' time. So we'll come back to that. But it sort of a little bit brings me back to my next question, which is, it's six years since you launched Send with this vision that we had talked about before. How do you think things have played out versus what your expectations were back in uh, 2017? I think as the three founders, we've always been the problem solvers, but not necessarily the strategists. And we got to last year and realized that we either had to accelerate the business or maybe temper some of our expectations. So last year for us, the big thing was going for funding rounds. So we, we're now venture capital backed. We've done our Series A funding and that's really enabled us to grow the business and build out all the capability that we need for our next phase of growth, really. We, when we started, we didn't know there'd be a pandemic <laughs> that, that, that slots in We into our journey. We've taken the process of, of building our business and seize the opportunities when they come along, rather than sitting back saying, well, you know, year one, year five, we'll be at this point. So yeah, I, I guess in the startup land, the, you come across a lot of things that you don't really anticipate. <laughs> and we've reacted and seized those opportunities when they've come. Yeah, it's been really interesting seeing what you've done is you built the business. I think you had 60 people last year and I spoke to Ben you know, about the time you were bringing the funding in. You had revenue, you'd already built a proof of what you're doing. And so that puts you in a very different position than somebody that's you know, and it's happening less and less these days right now. Is getting funding at a, you know, before you've actually even got any clients or, or a product. But look, I, publicly, I, you know, it's £9 million pounds of funding. It's about $10 million these days. Just specifically, how are you actually going to be spending that money? Investment we've used to grow the product base. So we've, we've built out new capabilities. So things like smart submission, which we've already mentioned, are all part of that. When you start a company and you're self-funded, as founders, you end up doing everything yourselves. And as we've been growing, we've brought experts in and the role of finance grows to the point where you need to bring someone in to do that. The role of you know, looking after your people grows. You need someone to come in uh, to handle that. So some of it's around product growth. Some of it's about building out the capabilities within the company. And also we are we're focusing some efforts on expanding our North America base. So we've got some customers there. We were some great companies in North America already. You know, over the last six months, we've hired, we've hired four people in North America, three in the US, one in Canada, and the team Send is growing. And it feels amazing to have a team over there who wear the badge of Send and are taking our story and believe in it to the market there. Yeah, no, it, it truly is really exciting to be able to grow beyond your home country. Uh, I was in New York last week, and there's just such tremendous energy out there. 
Uh, and actually also really interesting to see how many people from the UK, you know, have started in the UK and then actually now expanding out into the US. And, uh, and I think one of the benefits of starting out in the London market is there's so many, so much variety in what people want to do. You can build out a platform that is, is very flexible, deals with different lines of business, deals with messy data. And that's a really good place to go into the US when you can then start to fo you know, focus on some of the areas that they've got more speciality. And so yeah, I'm sure you hear more about that. And, and you mentioned some, the clients, I mean, Glenn Austin Brand from PwC mentioned that they'd done some work with you with the implementation with Aviva. Renaissance Free, I know, is a client. IGI, you mentioned some US clients as well in there. Any other ones that you can mention? I'm not going to go through them all, but highlight uh, Bowhead Specialty. We've been working with them for a couple of years now. And Everest, we're working with them on their international business. So they're using our, our underwriting workbench for that. So we've got more coming as well. We've got healthy uh, pipeline of business coming through at the moment is it's really exciting times for us and uh, we build our success by enabling our customers to do things in a better way well we're going to take partial credit for one of those customers when it's announced because i believe <laughs> he came across you by listening to the podcast with uh, with ben and then we did a dinner with you recently and he was at dinner and i asked him how'd you come across send and he told me so uh, that's always good to know all credit due I, I agree well you still got to deliver the product don't you we can open the door but you've got to prove the, the use case and then we're hearing a lot about ecosystems partnerships and again I, I keep coming across people who mentioned to me that they're working with send bringing data or providing access to data I mean, the benefit of what I'm seeing is that because you're providing that underwriting workbench to your clients, you know, they don't want to go out, insurers, reinsurers, MGAs, they don't want to go out and, and necessarily buy data separately. They don't have separate systems. But can you just talk a bit about what your, yeah, I guess what your approach is, your philosophy, strategy about how do you partner with companies to, to provide or complement what they're offering to your mutual clients? We have probably over 40 integrations with data services, policy administration systems, pricing platforms. And the way we look at it is how an insurer puts all of those things together in terms of what data they use for underwriting, how they approach pricing, how they manage exposure. That's secret source for them. And we want to go in with our platform and help them bring all of that together so that it's integrated, so that people aren't rekeying stuff, Everyone's talking about generative AI, but there's a lot of perhaps more boring stuff to be done where the real value is. We have people come to us and they want us to connect to data cleansing services. So we use Dun & Bradstreet, we connect to Address Cloud precisely. We've got pricing platforms we integrate with such as Hyper Exponential. We're talking to Coherence at the moment. And we also integrate with a number of policy administration systems as well. So that integration and that ecosystem is just so important because we take some of the strain away from customers having to tie all those things together themselves. We enable that to happen really easily uh, because we've got the pre-built connectors. If boring means it's like safe, reliable, does what it needs to do, trustworthy, then I'll take that any day over something that's like too exciting but crazy uh, when it comes to actually underwriting. So, no, well done. I hadn't realized it was 40. Is that list available anywhere? Is there somewhere on the website people can go and find out who you're working with if they've maybe already got a partner and they might make, make it helpful to know about? We've got some of the partners on, on our website. If anyone wants to get more details, they can get in touch with us and we'd be more than happy to share the list of pre-built integrations. Great. Okay, well, we'll pick it up towards the end. And then we released a report with, with you and Solo talking about this whole area of underwriting workbenches. Thanks for your support on that. Certainly from our perspective, it seems to be a lot of interest in it. Interested just to know uh, anything specific that's come out of that since that was released uh, about a month ago. We've been working with the team at Solas to help us build out implementation capability and scale that. You know, we don't want to do all the work ourselves. We can't do the work all ourselves. They've got a really great perspective on it that, as I said earlier, you know, underwriting is a bit of a team sport and you have that Technology is just one part of it. Like any successful technology project, there's a lot of business change involved as well. And they've, they've brought a great perspective on that. And I think reaction to us publishing that has been really interesting. We, people see the benefits of us, you know, working with them and nice. We've got a great platform and a lot of people know about Solars as well in the market. So yeah, it's been overwhelmingly positive um, in terms of that exercise and uh, Solars are really pleased with it as well. Excellent. We'll put a link to that in the episode notes as well. 
And then just if we dare to predict the next 12 months, what are we going to be talking about when we have the next podcast in, uh, in summer next year? I think going back to, to the start of our chat, we've got three founders. And I think next time you need, you need to chat with Matt McGrillis, third of the three co-founders at Send. We can maybe extend the competition to be a multi-year thing in terms of you know downloads and listens, whatever. That's one thing, but we're going to be growing. We're building out a business to grow 12 months from now. That will be a big part of the story. We will continue to innovate. There will be, there'll be something else we're looking at after Smart Submission. There's a number of things in the pipeline that we're looking at right now. Priorities for the next big product development. We want to build a sustainable, successful business. We see a lot of, see a lot of activity, people taking uh, funding and burning out. And the growth is exciting. Spending money is exciting, but we need to run a sustainable business uh, first and foremost. We've survived this far. You know, who knows what's around the future? But I mean, as I said before, I think those number of clients, high-profile clients, people on the ground. Yeah, I can see, as you said before as well, you never quite know what's in front of us. But I am pleased to know that I've now got a lunch date once a year with the three cent founders all competing to see who can be the most... Uh... <laughs> one of us will pay up. <laughs> That's the deal, right? Well, I'll come back to you on that one for sure. We've covered a lot there. But is there anything that I haven't asked you about or we should be talking about that we didn't cover? I'd love to mention our great team that we've built. Our success has been built by some great people that we've brought in to send. And we've got great products. We've got great customers, but we've got a fantastic team. And we, we've brought people on. It's been a fantastic journey seeing people come into the business and grow with us. They're doing things today that... They never thought they would be working on you know, maybe a few years ago. And we've got people who are from walks of life. We went remote first with the pandemic. So we've got people predominantly dotted around the UK. As I mentioned, we've got people in North America and we've got some folks in Poland and India as well who are part of, uh, part of Team Send. Interestingly, as part of our funding exercise, our investors wanted, one of the things they were keen on is that we develop our, you know, ESG store and a big part of that is having a, an environment that's inclusive and supportive for your team so we've brought in Pat Caldwell has joined us this year as chief people officer you know his job is to keep everyone happy and, and make it a great place to work and he asked when he started what do you want from me all the founders said make it the sort of place you'd want your kids to work that they'd be happy and feel supported so yeah, it's really important to us and we love our people at Send. It's a really important part. And I think for a lot of people, the pleasure of building a business. And you've got Sarah Sutton, who's doing a fantastic job leading the marketing and bringing experience on that. And it's really great to know that you're now investing in that from the people side with, with Pat. And then, Andy, for people that want to know more about what you're doing, you've got the website. What's the best way, though, if they want to contact someone directly to have a demonstration or just talk through some of the opportunities or just even I guess some of the questions about how would they would start to bring in an underwriting platform well absolutely go to the website or you know ping ping me on LinkedIn and start a chat there or I'm happy for people to email me directly it's andy at send.technology so get in touch if you want to discuss anything we've covered on this chat or or anything about about send really Great. So Andy Moss by LinkedIn or Andy at send.technology and we'll put that in the the episode notes as well. And then finally, this is your chance to leave people with the thing they're going to remember, if nothing else, and I'm sure they will, but yeah, the one thing they're going to take away is someone says, like, what were Matthew and Andy talking about on the Instep podcast? What should they remember? Uh, there's a massive opportunity in the pre-bind space to revolutionise how underwriting happens with technology we've built a great client base we've got some of the biggest and most innovative um, insurers using our platform send is going to be at the forefront of that that revolution and that's what i want people to take away no absolutely not everyone can say that so congratulations on building that up you've got some really strong clients in there and andy thank you very much i'll let you go back in the sun or back to work actually i just say because uh, it's <laughs> back, to back to work it's thursday morning <laughs> maybe get some sun on route but thank you very much look forward to seeing you face to face again really enjoy your support as a member of instec and uh yeah let's see how we go in terms of uh the success from this one thanks for the chat matthew appreciate it
Well, we're delighted to be working with over 100 technology companies like Send, as well as over 60 insurers, helping promote partnerships and the sharing of information. And if you're wondering how we can help you share your stories and find your friends, then contact any of us, hello at instec.co or me, Matthew Grant, on LinkedIn. That's it. We're done.